So in this tutorial we're going to look at how we can create an animation of this fishing trawler battling its way through an ocean swell. So the first thing to do is to create the ocean. So I'm going to go over to the Setup tab. Let's just hide the trawler. We'll create a new mesh layer. Just going to look down on the scene a little bit. Bring up the Modeling tab. Run the Cube tool. Drag out the polygon. And I want to create about half a kilometer square. So let's make it 500 meters by 500 meters. And we'll just make sure that it's centered. Now what I want to do is use textures to deform this geometry to create the waves. Now at the moment it's a single polygon so that won't deform at all. So I'm going to hit the tab key and then I'm going to hit the D key once, twice, three, four, five, six, seven times. So we've got about 500,000 polygons in OpenGL. Now in Modo if you want to use a texture to deform an object, you don't texture the object. You actually texture a fall off and then move the object through that fall off. So let's just bring this geometry into the schematic. So I've got the ocean item selected. Hit Add Selected. So we need a fall off. So in the Deformers tab, I'll add a radial fall off. I need it to be the same size as the ocean. So I'm going to make it 250 meter radius. So if I just add the radial fall off into the schematic, you can see that it's directly linked to the ocean. So at the moment it's actually going to deform the ocean and we don't want that. We want to be able to move the ocean and have the fall off just affect that movement. So I'm just going to disconnect those. And in order to move the actual ocean inside of this fall off, we need to use a gen general influence. So if I go to add deform item, let's add a general influence. We'll add that in. And we also need a transform effector. Okay, so now we can link this up. So the effector plugs into the effector. The ocean plugs into the geometry. And the fall off plugs into the fall off. So what that means now, if I select the transform effector, run the move tool, move it up, you can see the fall off that the fall off is modulating that movement. So this transform effector is what we're going to use to determine the wave height. So I'm just going to click on there and rename it and we'll call it wave height. Now at the moment we're getting the this fall off brought on by the radial fall off, which I don't want. I want it the deformation to be constant through the whole object. So to change that I'm going to select the radial fall off and make sure that the solid core is set to 100% and now the whole object is being deformed to the same amount. So let's set a more suitable wave height. So I'll bring that down to 10 meters, still pretty big but a bit more realistic. And then to texture the fall off, we select the fall off, right click and create an item mask. And then if we go to the shader tree, we'll get an entry for that radial fall off inside of the FX folder. Now when it comes to texturing this ocean, we're going to think big to start with and then gradually get smaller and smaller. So the big waves are going to be deformed. The medium sized waves are going to be a combination of deformation and displacement. And then the smallest waves are going to be bump maps. So let's start with the biggest waves first. So I'm going to select that radial fall off, go to add layer, and I'm going to add a ripple texture. You can see the surface being deformed. Now the first thing to do is to set the scale and also the projection. So we go to the texture locator, set the projection to planar and the axis to Y. And at the moment the texture is just far too small. So we need it to kind of um, be more relevant to the size of the actual geometry. So I'm going to change the size to one kilometer on the X and also the Z. So you can just still see the deformation in there. Now if we come to texture layer, we can now start adjusting some of these settings. So I'm going to change the sources to 2 and the wavelength to 10. And you can see we're beginning to see those waves now. Now one thing about this ripples texture is the ripples come across the surface at 45 degrees. Now it's going to be easier to animate this if it's, things are more aligned to the z-axis. So I'm going to go back to the texture locator and just rotate the texture by minus 45 degrees. 
Now at the moment this texture is completely static. If I hit the play button, nothing changes, nothing moves at all. So to animate this texture, what we have to do is animate this phase channel. So I'm going to key it and then go to around about frame 45 and we'll set a value in here. So I'll just set say 10%. I'm going to right click and open that up in the graph editor and we want that to be a constantly changing value. So I'm going to change the pre and post behaviors to linear. So if I just move that out of the way. So if I hit play now, you can see that that texture is now moving through that geometry. And the speed of that movement is, de is determined by the position of this key. So if I move that key further that way and hit play, you can see that the waves are now moving much faster. So I've for bait waves that are this size, they're going to be quite slow moving. So I found that you know, about 46 is about right. Now in reality, waves very rarely travel in the same direction. And also they very rarely travel at the same speed. So in order to try and recreate that, I'm just going to right click on that ripple's texture and duplicate it. So to make some waves travel in a different direction, just go to the texture locator and change the rotation to minus 20 degrees. Now, in order to see both those textures blended together, I'm going to change the blend mode to multiply. And I'm going to change the sources to one. And then to get the waves to travel at a slightly different speed, I'm just going to open up the graph editor. And let's change this value to 15%. So those waves are going to be slightly faster than the other ones. So let's just take a look at that. So that's the big waves taken care of. What we need now is some slightly smaller waves just to break things up a little bit. So I'm going to add another layer. I'm going to add a cellular texture. I'll keep the projection type as solid, but I'm going to change the size to 20 meters on both the X, Y and the Z. The displacement at the moment is far too big, so I'm going to change the opacity to about 5% and the blend mode to add. And then finally, I'm going to change the transi transition width to 80%. So that's created these kind of small, softer waves. If I remove the wireframe, you can see it a little bit better there. But again, these still aren't animated, they're just static. So to animate them, I'm going to go back to the texture locator. I'm going to key the Y position channel. And what we're going to do is animate this texture and move it up through the object. So let's go to around about frame 70. And I'm going to change the value to minus 8 meters. And if I open the graph editor, just like before, we want it to be a constantly changing value. So let's just change the pre and post behavior to linear. And again, if I move that key, I'm going to change the speed of that movement. So if I hit play, you can see that texture moving. Now the surface of an ocean is a fairly chaotic place. So to add to that chaos, let's create another layer. So I'll just right click and duplicate it. So of the blend mode as add, let's just up the opacity to 8%. And to have everything happening at a different kind of orientation, let's change the Y rotation to 45 degrees. And if I hit play now, we'll have even more going on. Now that's as far as I want to take the deformation. So what I want to do next is actually start texturing that surface. So I'll hit M and create a material called Ocean. So I'll go over to the Render tab. Let's just move the camera so we can see things a bit more clearly. Now, as far as the texture is concerned, I could build this up myself, but I've gone to the Share site, and there's a great preset on here of an animated ocean by Frederick Stenson. Now, it's not exactly what I want, but it's almost there. But the great thing is it's already animated for me. So I'm just going to drag and drop that into the shader tree. Now the reason why the ocean is so dark now is because it's a, it's a transparent material. 
Now, because I'm creating an animation here, I want this to render as quickly as possible. So I'm not really interested in creating some kind of physically accurate ocean with transparency and absorption distance and that kind of thing. I want to you know, fake it as much as possible. So what I'm going to do is come over to the material for the ocean and make a few changes. So first of all, I don't want there to be any transparency. So I'm just going to set that to zero. Then I'm going to go to the diffuse amount and set that to 80. And you can really start to see the texture there. So then I'm going to get rid of all of these settings, set them all down to zero, apart from the refraction Fresnel. And that's going to, that value of 20% is going to give me all the reflection that I'm going to need across the surface of the ocean as I'm looking across it. So next I'm going to go to the displacement texture and increase its scale because it's a little bit small at the moment. So I'm going to set that to five meters. And that's, you know, that might, that's my kind of next level of wave height or wave size. So next we can create the smallest waves of all and they're going to be generated using a bump map. So I'm just going to shift select those two layers, right click and duplicate them. Right click on the effect and set the effect to bump. And I'll just move that one up there so they're together. I'll set the bump amplitude to 100 millimeters. And if I shift select both of those again, go to the texture locator, I'll reduce their scale, take them down to two meters. And then just to add a little bit more variation, I can rotate them. So let's rotate them on the Y axis by 45 degrees. So I just want to make sure that I'm using the correct color space in preview here. At the moment it's set to linear, which, make, which is making everything quite dark. So I'm just going to set that to sRGB. I'm just going to give the ocean some color so it looks more like water. So we just want a dark blue, something like that. And you can see the Fresnel there. So I just want to adjust the environment lighting a little bit. So if I come to environments, I'm going to set the environment type to a two color environment. So I've just altered those colors ever so slightly. But I want it to feel like a dark, overcast, stormy day. And what's really going to add to that is some fog. It's going to really going to give it some depth. So if I go to the base shader, I'm going to change the fog type to exponential. I want to use the environment color. Now we just need to change the start distance, which I'm going to make oh, 250 meters. And I'm going to set the density to 1%. And you can just see that fog coming through there. I'll just zoom out a little bit. You can see it creating this kind of haze between the waves. So what's really going to make this look stormy is white horses scattered around the environment. Now we can control those by changing the color of the surface based on the displacement height of the texture. So if I add a gradient and I'm going to set the input parameter to be displacement height and using the color gradient I'm just going to open that up in the gradient editor so I'll create two keys I want this key to be a very dark blue you can see straight away we're getting the other color on those displaced areas. We just need the other key to be a light blue. Now as we're looking across the ocean, as the waves peak, the thickness of the water will diminish as the wave gets higher. And that would cause kind of increased transparency in the wave and therefore the color would change as well. Now I don't want to actually deal with transparency at all. So what I can do is fake it with luminosity. So again, I'm going to load a gradient. I'm going to change the effect to luminous amount. 
going to set the input parameter to be distance y a distance to locator. Let's open up the value gradient. So I'm going to set the first key to be 0 and 0. Let's create another key. So I want the waves to become slightly luminous when they reach their maximum height, which is 10 meters. So let's set the input to 10 meters and the value or the, the amount of luminosity to 10%. We don't want it to be really, really bright. And you can see we're getting a slight change at the top of the waves there. Now I'm just going to change the shape of that curve so it kind of peaks more uh, drastically towards the top of the wave. And I can change that just by changing the shape of that curve like that. Now to see it more clear, clearly we need to change the colour of the luminous channel. So we'll go back to the material. and the material trans, let's give this a really obvious colour, so again, of a kind of a red. And you can see how we're just getting some red coming through the top of the wave there. So I actually want this to be a, just a lighter blue. It's a very subtle effect, but it'll really make a difference when the scene is animated. So I've just done a quick test render, just to give me a feeling of how those textures are animating. And because the textures are so simple, it rendered very, very quickly. And it's giving me the impression of a kind of churning ocean. And we may need to make some changes later on in the project as it progresses, but it's a good starting point.